Next up on our Lion Legends segments, we're talking with former UNA great Ronald McKinnon, the 1995 Harlan Hill winner. He went on to a 10-year career in the NFL. We're going to cover it all. Ronald, thank you for taking the time to catch up with us. And first thing, just give UNA fans an update on where you're located today and what you're up to. Yeah, I'm in Birmingham. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good, pretty good today. So I, I think, you know, everything's starting to go back to normal. So um, uh, I'm just, I'm at home and uh, just, just waiting to, to get back outside. So let's talk through your career. First off, a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, three-time national champion at UNA, the GSC Defensive Player of the Quarter Century, uh, 10 years in the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals and New Orleans Saints. But the University of North Alabama, just when you look back on all of it, what does UNA mean to you? Man, it means a lot. Um, you know, I told people, you know, if I got a chance to do it again, I, I, I wouldn't do anything different. I always go to UNA. Um, you know, I'm just happy that they was able to, you know, allow me to get a chance to, to play sports and uh, get a, a great education. And um, I mean, they, they mean the world to me. And, uh, you know, just the small school, the classrooms, uh, the friends, you know, that I got for a lifetime, I mean, you can't substitute. Let's go back to your recruitment to UNA out of Elba, Alabama. Why UNA? What made you choose to, to go play football there? Uh, you know, um, I'm originally from Elba, Alabama. So, you know, I'm from a small school and, um, you know, getting a chance to, you know, I got recruited by Randy Campbell and getting a chance to, uh, um, to come to North Alabama, get a chance to meet, you know, Coach Wallace and, and all, all the coaches and staff and, and it really felt like home. And, um, you know, I'm not a, a bright lights type of city guy. I'm, I'm a, I'm a down home guy. And um, when I got a chance to go to Florence and, and got a chance to meet everybody, the football players and uh, the coaches, um, I felt like a home and, and, um, and uh, I got a chance to speak with it with my, with my mom and dad. And uh, they said, this is where you're going. <laughs> so uh, uh, best decision I ever made. Let's talk about your freshman year of 1992. A great freshman class came on that accomplished great things, but you were the GSP Defensive Freshman of the Year. What do you remember about year one at UNA? Man, um, you know, my, my freshman year, we, we had so many, I want to say, talented players. Uh, um, you know, we had guys like, um, you know, older guys such as like, like – Harvest Summerhill, you know, you had O.J. Patrick, you know, you had, um, uh, you had Michael Jackson, you know, you had uh, Scott Pruitt. I mean, you had a bunch of older guys that was on that team and that, you know, that was unselfish and understood that what Coach Howard was doing was everybody had a role and understand that, you know, had a coach, you say you had some that's, uh, piano movers and he had some that's piano players. <laughs> so the thing about it was everybody was unselfish, uh, got a chance to, to, to do the things that's parameter, that's, that's, that's in the defense. And, um, you know, but, you know, once again, with a defense, you got to have offense. And I think our offense played, you know, exceptionally well. And, you know, my freshman year, we, uh, we got a chance to go to the, uh, the playoffs, but we got beat by Jacksonville. And uh, we, we made a commitment after that. So once that commitment was made, you know, it's UNA from here on out. <laughs> so let's jump into the championship years now. And I want to talk about a, a couple of highlights from the Ronald McKinnon film room. And first off, in 1993, Veldosta State, they had a quarterback, Chris Hatcher, UNA fans, very familiar with him. He would go on to win the Harlan Hill. He'd thrown five interceptions all season entering that game. And, you happened to intercept two passes that game. He threw five overall. You returned one for a touchdown as well. Do you remember much about that particular play and moment? Well, uh, was that when we played them down there in, in that also when I, when I scored a touchdown? It was, and I believe a certain clip <laughs> followed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that, was a, that was a great game. Um, you know, uh, man, it was a – it was a tough game. You know, you, you got to understand you're playing against uh, a Harlan Hill uh, 
a quarterback out of Chris Hatcher, and you know he's throwing that ball, and um, Al Mummy is uh, calling the plays, and he has some great receivers. But you know, once again, you know it's it's a it's a team effort, and you know with our team, you know if 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 one side is down, the other side always picks them up. You know, it's no no arguing with each other with teammates, this and that. Hey, if they go three and out, defense go out there. Hey, we we'll get your ball back, and um, you know especially when you got great guys of, um, you know, from Cody Gross, you know, you had, um, you had uh, uh, Tyrone Rush, you had Brian Satterfield, you had, you had Kenyatta, you know what I mean? Any of those guys are home run guys. And um, whenever you get the ball back to them, even from Jairus Hayes, anytime you get the ball back to them uh, um, in the offense hands, it's, it's a chance for them to score. The 93 National Championship game, we've talked about a couple of the big moments in that one with other players, but you had 17 total tackles winning the first national championship. When you look back to 93, what are some of the memories? Man, that was a, that was a tough game, um, especially, I think, uh, IUP. And um, that was a, you know, first time in the championship, being young, uh, you know, we were just in the moment and, um, you know, we had some big plays and we had, you know, the, the game was up, the game was down, it was real close. And then um, Israel, Israel blocked the punt <laughs> and then, um, you know, uh, everything else was uh, history after that. We just needed something, somebody to make a play. And, it, you know, I, I just felt like, uh, you know, at the time Israel made the play and that was a big play and, um, and after that, we won the national championship. So you win the first one. You follow that up as a junior in 94, winning another one. And in this ball game, UNA's winning 16-3. to No first downs for the offense in the second half. A comeback attempt comes up short. You have an interception with 222 left in the game that kind of helps seal that ball game. What do you remember about that moment? Man, that was, uh, that was also a, a, a tough game, um, especially playing against those guys. Those guys uh, – they they remind you so much of us. I mean, you know, all the pieces that we had, uh, they had the same amount of pieces, and um, they were they was physical, they was tough. It was cold, it was raining, um, just like anything else. Is that, you know, once you get in those moments of those big games or next championship games, uh, somebody has to make a play, um, and and it's just like about winning. You know, winning is all about inches, and um, you know. It's it's the it's the team that made the least the the least mistakes always win and um we got a chance to the quarterback threw the ball I got a chance to drop to the um, I dropped to the the curl and um I saw the ball go and it got a chance to uh, the 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 bob the ball up up a couple of times and got a chance to intercept it and um, my my biggest thing was just let's let's hold on to the ball and <laughs> give it back to the offense and let them run the clock out. But um, you know, we we did it, and um, and I think after that, I think they had to throw the ball again, and I think uh, Paul Sunday got a chance to get an interception at the end that they really sealed the deal. So, I mean, it's it's a great effort. You know, you, you just got to understand that you know that when we win, we win as a team, and um, you know, it's it's it's, it's you and a all day, and um, you know, it's not no certain prayer that you know it's it's all about you and a. 95, you guys are going to make it three in a row. A lot of big moments to cover from 95, but what do you remember just about the pressure and the preparation heading into that final year? Well, you know, that's that's a tough one, you know, because, uh, you know, we we have got a chance, you know, from, from my sophomore year all the way up to my senior year to, you know, we um, went, lost one game in, in three years, and um, we got a chance to knowing that everybody's going to shoot at you. Every week we had to play our best game. And understanding that, you know, we got guys that, you know, sometimes that that um, that you just had to, you know, put your foot on and, and understand that, hey, when we step on this football field, that, you know, it's not about um, who's going to win the game. It's about how bad we're going to beat you. And, and the biggest thing about it was that I think everybody was accountable about understanding their job and understanding that, hey, you know, every game, every play, you got to go hard and you got to understand every play 
every down, I expect everybody to be around the ball or every day, hey, we can't have any fumbles, you know what I'm saying? You got to practice. You know, nobody missed practice. You know, everybody was there at meetings. Everybody was there on time, you know. Whenever you got that, you know, because I think that, you know, Coach Wallace and all the coaches, Coach Hyde and Coach Slater, all the coaches understand that I think is a, a player-led team is a championship team. And I think that, you know, when you had leaders, you know, Sam, you know, Cody, um, you had, um, you know, you had some leaders on offense, uh, Jairus, um, and you had deals on defense, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you had, got all those, you remember Keith Humphrey, you got to understand Israel, Marcus Keys, you know, Charles Dugworth, uh, uh, even, you know, Gerald Smith, the, 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 the Zach Phillips, you know what I'm saying? The, the Dave, you know what I'm saying? You got all those guys that, you know, that's self-motivated and understand that, hey, they don't want to be the weakest link and understanding that each and every week we got to play the best game we can play every down and every play. So. Let's talk a little bit more about what you were just touching on. You started rattling off some names. Let's talk purple swarm <laughs> defense, Bill Hyde, the architect. Here's some numbers on that 95 defense. Led the nation in rushing defense, scoring defense, total defense. Led the Gold South Conference in virtually everything. Jeff Hodges gave us some great numbers. Ten straight scoreless quarters you guys posted. In nine of the 14 games, the opposing team didn't score in the second half. Truly one of the greatest defenses probably ever to yeah. see. What made that purple swarm so good? And what do you remember about Bill Hyde? Oh, man. Man, Coach Hyde, he, he's, he's one of the greatest. Um, you know, I, I think Coach Hyde understood that you know, he put players in situation to make plays. And he understood that, you know, uh, what's your strength and what's your weakness. Um, even like, um, you know, you got to think about, you know, you have Ruffin, you have Ruffin over there playing defense end, and, and he ends up with a career of 44 sacks, you know what I'm saying? You know, he puts him in a situation to make make plays. You got Israel, you know what I'm saying, 6'7". You got Marcus Keys, you know, saying six five, six four. You know, you got, you know, Charles Dilworth, you know, from Marcus Hunter to, uh, you know, he puts everybody in a situation, and he understood that, you know, everybody has to be a piece. You know, saying it's no one man show. Everybody got to be able to do their job, and once you do your job, and you know, saying everybody's be able to make plays, and you know, whenever you get a chance to make a play, um, you know. It's, it's, it's your time to make a play. But, you know, saying the Purple Swarm, man, you know, it's one of our uh, pet peeves, you know. The thing about it, it just don't happen. It just don't happen in the game. You know, it happens in practice. And uh, we take pride in that, um, you know, running, running to the ball at practice. Um, we, we take pride of, uh, you know, if we got just two or three people at the ball, that's, that's not acceptable. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, uh, we we do it in practice, so it makes it easy in the game. So we try to have at least about nine to ten, to 11, 11 guys at the ball. So if the ball is going to the left, eleven guys get to the ball, no exception, and um, you know nobody's complaining. Of, hey, we want everybody high fiving, jumping around, you know, being excited because you know it's a fun sport. You know, what I'm saying you get a chance to uh, you put the pads on and get a chance to. Uh, Hit someone and uh, and uh, you you know what I'm saying and, and and give the chance to enjoy. It. So that's 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 big. That's real big. Let's that's jump in a couple of some of the other big moments from '95. You would win the Harlan Hill Award that season. More in just a second. But there was a big showdown between you and another Harlan Hill finalist and Bill Love, the quarterback from Ferris State, in a matchup against UNA. He threw five interceptions. He was sacked twice. You had two of those interceptions in one of the sacks. So there you are in a big game. Everybody's watching this matchup, and you're making big plays. What was that like? Man, that was uh, – that was uh, – that was a – if I'm going to recall, like semifinal games, correct? And right. so, you know, it was a big time. And, um, you know, uh, he, he coming down to Florence, and, uh, you know, he get a chance to showcase of, of, of what he – he needed to do to be able to win the Harlem Hill. And, um, you know, I just wanted to just thank my teammates because, uh, you know, I think each and every one of them uh, took it personal, you know, saying they took it personal, such as, you know, you're not coming to Florence to try to, you know, try to uh, 
make us look bad or make us, uh, you know, uh, you know, I was up for the Harlem Hill. So he's like, you know, you're not going to get the Harlem Hill from Ron McKinnon. So um, I think, you know, from offense to defense, I thought those guys just, uh, played uh, lights out and um, did an exceptional job to, you know, to give me a chance to have opportunities to intercept two interceptions and, and have a sack. I mean, that was, that was outstanding. That was outstanding. So you win the Harlan Hill award. What do you remember about the summit ceremony and when your name was called? Man, uh, the Harlan Hill was, uh, that was a, a special moment that night. Um, and, you know, at the time, you know, they, they, they do the ceremony just for the national championship. So, uh, it was exceptional, you know, I had to get in tuxedo. Um, and then all of a sudden my teammates, you know, they, they surprised me and watched, watched the, uh, the ceremony. And, um, and then after that, you know, you, 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 you're up, you're excited about the championship. Then you, you know, you get zipped back. You got to get off your suit, get zipped back to the hotel. You got to go to sleep and you got to play the national championship game. And, um, uh, man, I, I remember that night, uh, because uh, after that night we had a big team meeting and um, and it was a it was a long team meeting and uh, you know there's a a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of men in there and uh, a bunch of men uh, you know seniors got a chance to speak and uh, what it what it meant for you know at the time uh, what it meant for each and every one of them because you know we don't we don't been there this is going to be our third time being in that championship and. Um, you know, we we just laid it on the line and and told uh, told each and every one of the teammates, uh, you know, you know how much they meant to us and how much you know this this game was meant to them. And I think everybody at the time, I think Coach Coach Wallace knocking at the door. Or some of the coaches knocking at the door. The guys got to go to sleep. And uh, man, by the time that door opened, man, you could you could tell that we was gonna win that game. It was it was nothing. It was nothing gonna stop us that 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 next day. So yeah, I mean, it was a outstanding feeling that night. A win over Pittsburgh State capped off the the three peat, if you will. You had 15 tackles in that game. You recovered a fumble as well that set up a UNA score. But capping it off the three peat 95. How sweet was it all? Man, whenever whenever you can um, be a champion is uh, is always sweet. You know what I'm saying? But but to be able to you know, to understand that at the time, you know, you got freshmen that's on that team and you got sophomores on that team. They understand that, you know, what it takes, the preparation, what it takes each and every week to uh, to play against, you know, uh, different opponents and that understand that they're going to give you your best game every time and, and to, and to do it with the class and, 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 and the, you know how how we play the game is is outstanding because what we left on the football field, some of your younger guys they picked it up and continued to do the same thing, and that um, you know it was a it was a it was a pride, it's you know being from UNA and understanding that hey, you you play against UNA that you're gonna um, you you gonna have to play your best game, and then you have to play your best game again, <laughs> and then you might have a chance. To beat us, you know what I'm saying? But we're we're not, you know, we we refuse to lose. So, you know, that's that's one of the biggest things that uh, you know I remember. You have 40 total tackles and three national championship wins. Are there any other moments from the championship games that just pop out at you? Man, we have uh, we have so many, so many. Uh, championships, you know, at the, at the time, I mean, it's just, you know, you have, uh, you know, you have from, from, from uh, Demetrius Selden, uh, you know, he, he, he do his touchdown. You have from, uh, you know, uh, Michael Edwards, you know, we call him quick six, you know, he has his touchdowns. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, you got Jairus Hayes, you know, reverse, reverse tight end, you know, he do his thing. Um, you have uh, uh, Cody, with a, you know, coming back, you know, hurt. You remember coming back hurt uh, with a hip and then coming to finish the game and, uh, 
man, you know, from him to Kale Manning and, um, man, to just to be able to – see, that's that's being unselfish. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you had um, guys that uh, came off the bench, uh, understood their role, um, did their role, and, you know, the defense understood that, you know, hey, you had Cody hurt. I mean, we got to – sometimes you got to take up the slack and um, – and uh, we, we did what we were supposed to do. And just like anything else, you know, if I got hurt, um, you know, some of the guys got to step up to, uh, to, to make a plate or, or, or Keith Humphrey or anybody, you know, saying. So it's, um, you know, it's just being competitive and, and being understanding that, hey, you know, you got to, you know, make sure that you do your job to the best and uh, make sure when, when your numbers get called that you, you'll be ready. So you wrap up your career at UNA as one of the most decorated college football players. Now, let's jump into your NFL career. Undrafted in the 1996 NFL draft, you signed as a free agent with the Arizona Cardinals. So what was that process like, and how did you end up with the Cardinals? Man, it was, uh, you know, it's exciting. It was, uh, um, during, during that time at the UNA, um, just before I got a chance to go to the NFL, my mother had just passed. And, um, you know, we had like 28 of the 30, 32 teams came up there to uh, to work us out. And I told um, – I had a – I got a chance to run real well. And um, I, I benched real well. I, I did everything. And I, I got a chance to say, hey, I told my mom, I said, uh, I, I ran real well that night and uh, that day against the scouts. And uh, – she just told me to keep running. But, you know, the biggest thing was that, you know, my agent got a chance, you know, to, uh, to talk to the Cardinals. The Cardinals said, hey, we want to, we want to, we want to get you. And, um, and uh, I got a chance to fly there. Um, I didn't get a chance to fly Friday. Um, you know, normally I fly you Friday, but I had to do something in, in, um, in the state. I had to get an award at, um, in Birmingham. And I got a chance to fly after I got the award to Phoenix. So Phoenix picked me up um, about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So everybody done met each other uh, on Friday. So I'm the last one. I'm the last, I'm, the last, I'm the last guy to get a chance to meet. So I had to wake up early in the morning, about 6 o'clock, go to a facility. Never, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I, I don't know anybody. But all I know is that, hey, you know, I'm – I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm Robert Kennedy, North Alabama, so, you know. So, got a chance to, uh, you know, go to facility. First thing first, you know, coming from North Alabama, you know, you go to this, 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 big, this big training facility, you know, Arizona Cardinals, you go in and, uh, you know, you, uh, you see all these big guys and, you know, you see on television, this and that, and then you're thinking, like, hey, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, my first, my first one was uh, Eric Hill, for example. Um, you know, he played at LSU, big time linebacker. So he's about six three, maybe about two sixty five, two seventy. I'm talking about rocked up, look like Lee Hain. So um, you know, I'm I'm thinking he played like DN or something like that. I ain't know he played no linebacker. So I said, man, what you play? He said, middle linebacker. I said, oh man, <laughs> I said it's gonna be tough. <laughs> I said it's gonna be tough for me, but. Um, you know, got a chance to uh, – I had to uh, just prove to uh, – just like anything else, um, you know, coming from Elba, going to UNA, you got to prove to the older guys that, hey, you know, you're here to play. And you here to, um, you know, to give it 110%. And um, once I touched that football field, um, I knew one thing, that I was running to the ball and um, – and I was making plays at practice and understanding that, you know, if you run to the ball, you make plays at practice and you do it at practice, it's nine out of 10, you're going to do it in game. And, um, and that's what I did. So, um, and then make a long story short, got a, got a chance to, uh, you know, to play the preseason games and, you know, they had me on all the special teams, you know, at the time. And I got a chance to play defense because, um, uh, you know they don't want to hurt most of the uh, the older the older veterans. You know just for regular season, so I got a chance to play defense. And you know, 
you know, that's that's my thing is defense. And uh, I got a chance to make a whole lot of tackles in preseason game. And and um, and I did Royal and special teams. Uh, I think one one play that that really uh, that that stood out was uh, I got a chance to run it down against uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And I think I. I bust the wedge and and then I bust the the running back and they had a big fumble and and it was a big play and, and um, I think uh, then the Cardinals said uh, we can't let you go <laughs> and that was good. So you make the team and early on in Arizona, your college teammate and your college roommate Jarius Hayes is with the Cardinals as well. So what was it like those early days in the NFL with one of your close friends from UNA? Man, it's it's always good, always good to have somebody you know that's um that understands a winning because you know when we went to the Cardinals, um you know they weren't winning many games and and for me and Jared to go there we just lost once game one game in 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 three years, uh, we trying to bring a winning attitude, understanding that you know hey you got to take pride whatever it, whatever it takes to win the game, but understanding that, you know, we'll be the first one out there, last one leave if we aren't doing nothing but sit-ups, uh, push-ups, you know, catching the ball, doing something, because that's what we used to do is is, is win. And, um, and, you know, we didn't get a chance to win many games, and I, you know, but the thing about it was we had older guys out there that was, um, that was professionals that, that understood that, you know, just what you got to do to be a professional and understanding that, you know, once you get to the league, you know, we coming from North Alabama, we, we watching film on VHS and then all of a sudden you go to the NFL, you got a sideline, you got a wide, you, you got a, you got a front, you got a back, you know what I'm saying? You got all these different, different, different angles of watching film that, you know, you, you cannot do nothing but get better. So, and uh, but we took pride of, of of not being the weakest link, and um, you know when they cut that film on, you know saying you get graded this and that, you are gonna make sure that hey you got to be able to grade you know ninety ninety percent or above or else you know in the NFL you know NFL stand for not for long. So you know say you know if you don't do a good job, <laughs> you you'll be out of there. So. Well, you certainly had a long, successful career. Ten seasons, and you had a great stretch. In 99, you finished third in the league in total tackles. 2000, you finished second in the league. And then in 2001, you finished third. So, you got that streak where you're finishing top in the league in tackles. Five seasons with over 100 tackles. I mean, what was that run like for you? Man, you know that's hey, that's that's too long on defense. <laughs> that's too long on defense. But but you know, you know, you talk about the NFL and you talk about you know you playing on. Um, you know, one thing I want to tell you is that you know you always hear about uh, guys hitting the wall, like um, hitting the wall at a certain time because most most of the teams, uh, most of the, the big teams, they play ten games and and you know they have to wait for a bowl game, such and such. And we play 14 games. We play 14 games all the time. I mean, it ain't no wall for us. So we understand a plan through November. You know, plan in December. So you know, you know, me playing, going from UNA and going to league. I mean, hey, that's what we do all the time. And um, but you can see some of the guys from the big schools are, are getting getting tired, and you know, uh, you know, don't you know, say don't know how to pick it up. You know, what I'm saying, but you know. That's our playoff season, so we understand of uh, of uh, picking it up. But you know, I play. You know, I played uh, in um, in Arizona. I played with some great athletes. I played with um, you know Pat Tillman, which passed away. I played with you know Eric Twan. I taught Eric Hill, Jameer Miller. You know Seth Joyner. You know first quarterback was uh, Puma Sison. Uh, Jake Plummer, you know, saying Dave Brown, um, you know, a Hall of Famer, Aeneas Williams, you know, saying, um, you know, another Hall of Famer going to be there is probably going to be Larry, uh, Larry Centers, you know, the uh, fullback. He coming from a smaller school. And, um, and it's, you know, understanding that um, when I went to uh, 
uh, Arizona, I, I felt like uh, those guys open arms, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they teaching you um, how to be a professional. They, um, you know, they got a great work ethic. Um, and also um, they was unselfish. When I say unselfish is because, you know, especially with the guy that, um, that mentored me was, you know, he could have easily said, you know, man, you know, you're a young guy. I know why they brought you in here to, to take my job, this and that. He could easily say, man, I'm not going to teach you anything. But he he opened his arms and he he understood that, hey, you know, eventually, you know, saying, you know, he's going to get older in the league and, and I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to take over. And he showed me how to be a professional and, and do it right and making sure that, hey, everybody's accountable about doing what they're supposed to do. But, you know. It, it was it was it was some great years, great years. Nine years with the Cardinals, one with the Saints, over a thousand tackles in your career in the NFL. Are there any certain memories, stadiums, players you played against that still just resonate with you today? Man, it's it been some it's been some cold it's been some cold games. Um, I can tell you, uh, I can remember one game is that uh, we played. Green Bay on New Year's Day, and um, it was so cold. It was so cold up there at uh, Lambeau Field, and and you know it gets it gets <laughs> it gets cold that you don't even take your helmet off. So you just you just leave your helmets on, <laughs> leave your helmets on, and you try to get by the heater. But because you gotta understand, you know, you living in Phoenix, um, and, and January first, it's eighty five degrees. So you know you be in the pool or in the hot tub, you know what I'm saying? And then you go up to Green Bay. Is you know it's minus six or minus eight, you know. Saying it's, I mean it's it's um you know it's gut wrenching. And um, but you know another thing is uh you know when I played with the Saints, uh, it was uh during Katrina year and um in the '05 and it, it, that was a tough season. But understanding that you know we went from we went from all of a sudden. You know, you get a phone call at night, in the middle of the night uh, uh, with New Orleans Saints and say, hey, you know, you, you got to come to the facility. Um, you got to come to the facility where um, you're getting ready to evacuate. And, um, you know, you, whatever you got, whatever you got, make sure you get it because we're not going to be coming back because the hurricane is coming. And, um, you know, doing that. <clears throat> and then, you know, we, we flew from – we flew from New Orleans to San Jose, and then from San Jose, that's where we watched um, the hurricane came and uh, hit New Orleans, and and um, you know, it's, you, you know about the, the, the tragedy in New Orleans, and um, and then you know we had to go from there from San Jose, then we had to go to San Antonio, <laughs> so we we stayed in San Antonio, we lived there, we played the game in uh, Alamo Dome, and um, then, you know, after that, so, you know, we'll, we'll fly. We've, I think our first game, we flew to New York and played up in New York Giants. We played up there. Then we, we came back, and then we, we, we played a couple games in uh, Baton Rouge and LSU. We played a couple games there. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a trying time, but understanding that, you know, we was uh, playing for the city and playing for um, – for the, for the you know for the city of New Orleans and uh, for the state of Louisiana and um and those guys was you know just those guys was we we're displaced and we still was able to fight each and every week of uh, you know going out and uh, and and putting a good product out on on Sunday field. So great career in the NFL, great career at UNA. Let's talk about the Hall of Fame run that you had afterwards. You're in five Hall of Fames. The big one I want to touch on, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, now housed in Atlanta, Georgia. UNA fans can go to Atlanta, see where you are inducted, see your plaque there. But that experience, the big names that you were inducted with, what, what was that honor like for you? Man, that was a um... – Man, that was an unbelievable honor uh, just to be able to to be on some of those uh, the, those names uh, of guys that's in the College Hall of Fame, and um, uh, 
But, you know, for it to be me, I just want to just say, you know, my my teammates, um, you know, my teammates, the one that, um, you know, had, gave me the opportunity to, to, to have my name in the College Hall of Fame, um, you know, um, and, you know, those guys, those guys, it, it, you know, it was unselfish. I mean, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about them. It was, you know, it was about just being a team and understanding that, hey, we're going to win as a team. We lose as a team. We win as a team. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you know, you, we team winning, somebody has to get some credit. And, um, and uh, man, it could have easily been – I mean, it could, you, you got – 11 on offense, you got 11 on defense. It could be easy to be someone else, but uh, but we were just uh, man, we just uh, they stuck it out and um and and for every honor that that I receive, um, I just want to you know me personally just give it to um, you know to 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 the team uh, for the team and also for the coaches for this um, you know putting us in situations. Uh, to 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 be our best, you know what I'm saying? To to play our best and 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 continue to be successful. Ronald, last thing for you. It's been a great conversation. You're now coaching at Miles. Uh, Reggie Ruffins, you the head coach there. What's yeah. it like now? You played together, won championships together, now working side by side together. Man, it's it's awesome uh the game is the the see Ruffin because Ruffin has uh he has uh he has came from 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 Re <laughs> from Reginald Ruffin to now he's the uh, the head coach and he's also the athletic director so you can see that he has um, tremendously uh, matured because he's in a, um he's in a, a big time role he's doing a, a excellent job in Miles he understanding that he's changing the he changes the platform he changes the culture he's um, He's uh, he's innovating new things. Uh, always uh, always on the up, up and on the new. Everything is, has to be the new. And uh, for him to you know be the head the head coach and uh, and and to motivate each and every one of them players, um, yeah, it's it's always it's always exciting because you know he played the game. You know what I'm saying? And he played it at a high level. And understanding that. You know that when he talks, he's talking about experience. You know, saying he's just not talking out of a book. He's not talking about this. He's talking about what he's done on and off the field, and and what ha has been happening through his life that um, that that gets the guys each and every day motivated. And uh, and it's easy to be motivated when, you, especially when you hear Ruffin talk, because uh, Ruffin could talk. <laughs> you know, so he could talk. Well, Ronald, thanks for catching up with us. Thanks for sharing some great stories, and thank you for everything you did for UNA. Man, thank you. Thank you.